Hello, everyone. Santa here, and today I want to talk about a... I've heard it referred to as dualism, uh, but it's a philosophical concept that... It was more, it was stronger in the past, I think, in terms of how it was understood. But uh, it was this idea that the material world is inherently evil and the spiritual or intellectual world is inherently good. Uh, it's this sort of dichotomy, this dualism uh, concept. At least dualism is what I've heard it referred to as. Perhaps it has another name that you're more familiar with. Uh, but I want to talk about this in particular because I've had some things recently connect together in my brain uh, while having a Twitter conversation related to the topic. And I thought it was rather interesting. So there are consequences of this. Uh, just the initial sort of point that I want to make has to do with pleasures. Specifically, physical pleasures under this model are considered inherently bad. Uh, whereas, like intellectual or spiritual pleasures, so for example, a good conversation, a good book, uh, these sorts of things would be considered more inherently good uh, under this sort of framework. Because if it's an intellectual thing, that, that's good there. But if it's a physical thing, according to this moral philosophy is there is there a specific term for a moral philosophy it feels like there would be and it feels like it's something that i i should be aware of but i don't i don't know if there's a specific term but anyway uh according to this sort of moral philosophy uh anything that's a physical pleasure such as tasty food hmm that's maybe not as good maybe that there's something inherently wrong there uh now this was stronger uh in in the past but the like it is inherently incompatible with Christianity and the dominant rise of Christianity in European culture uh, had an impact on this. Now, this philosophy, I think, was absorbed into Christianity. It, for those who are wondering, by the way, it's inherently incompatible because the idea of God incarnating into physical human flesh, like physical body, uh, you can't have holy God inherent and and in physical form because that that creates a paradox, um, a moral paradox. You can't have goodness and evil wed like that. It's just not possible. Um, and in fact, the uh, the letter of First John, uh, the biblical book, is talking all about this, where they had all sorts of things where people are like, no, Jesus couldn't have come actual f in the physical flesh because that, that wouldn't be possible for a good spiritual being. Um, but I, I think that sort of diluted it, but I think that concept got uh, absorbed by Christianity regardless. And I think the, the things that this has explained to me uh, a couple of things that I've, I found very mysterious. One, the idea that delicious foods are sinful. Uh, it's always been perplexing to me. I, I haven't understood where that came from. Uh, but the idea that, oh, it's a physical pleasure, therefore it's inherently sinful. Ah, now that makes sense. It's like sinfully delicious just as a phrase, like you see that on like chocolates and ice cream. Uh, and it's like, what? Oh, no, why? That doesn't make any sense. The food tasting good doesn't make it inherently sinful. Um, it's just always perplexed me. And, and, and I think this explains why. Uh, another uh, significant one is this has had a huge negative impact on the view of sex. I think this is why uh, sex and sexuality tends to be viewed like tend to have so much of like a sin factor about them and in, the, in their perception. But I think more than that, this goes into something that has perplexed me greatly, which is the concept of childhood innocence. This has perplexed me because I've interacted with children and I've been a child and children are not inherently innocent. Children are bullies and cruel very often. Not all kids are like terrible, but children in aggregate, they, they, they will lie. They are very selfish. Uh, you have to teach them how to be more like a good moral agents. Um, they are often like cruel in many, many ways. That, in, as far as I'm concerned, is sinful guilt. Like you have to teach them to be like properly moral beings. Uh, that's that's part of what culture and society and and parents and all that sort of stuff are trying to do with with children is raise them to be proper, responsible moral agents. So where does this fantasy with childhood innocence come from? And it, it's always kind of confused me a little bit. Uh, it's like okay, they're naive and ignorant, but that's not the same thing as innocent. Uh, and then also, like, what makes them lose their innocence? It seems to be uh, becoming overtly aware of sexual things. Like, that idea is they become teenagers uh, and start to go through puberty and d develop sexually into sexual beings. That's what makes them lose their innocence. Um, 
And that's always confused me. And I think this explains it, that if being a sexual being is considered inherently sinful because being material and material pleasure is inherently sinful, then, of course, sex gets elevated as the, the greatest inherent evil under this whacked out crazy paradigm, uh, then that would mean that a person being like protosexual or like presexual, um, that sort of state would inherently be more innocent because it is lacking the sort of inherent sinfulness of being sec- a sexual being. Uh, and I think that that explains this concept of, of childhood innocence uh, and makes it make sense to me. Um, it's a very weird, weird concept that's just not computed before. So anyway, I wanted to share some of those, those thoughts, those ideas. Um, and uh, I've done so now, so I'm going to wrap up. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, everyone, take care. Goodbye.